So, okay, guys, it's Dash dashing into you. Oh, okay. Hi guys, this is Dash dashing into you with this new video. Okay, so we're back with the letter. I lost my save file, so I don't know what to do last night. So I I just had it back. Maybe in a way I just kept the parts that I, that I'm done with. So okay, let's continue the game. I load the game and it's there. Okay, see that date? It's 8:28 right now. <laughs> it's August 28 right now, and I just. Um, rush through the game. So here I am back with Isabella. Okay, I'll start the game. Hmm. Okay. So Zach is there with a with a straight up face, um, acting really, 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 really surprised. Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Yeah, I'm sure it's not one of the cleaning crews. Absolutely sure. Okay, good with that, Isabella. Somehow halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened in the mansion. To be fair, Zack Swan will brought it up again in his own movie premiere. <laughs> now the film's just serving as a background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones, not to disturb anyone inside the small hall. Well, except for Ash. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'll all get a kick out for sure. Oh, sorry. Though with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Only Becca still remains engrossed in the boom, be completely ignoring us. Hmm. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referred to. If I didn't know any better, sorry about that. I think we did something that offended her earlier. What the hell is it, though? I'll just put this here. Yeah, my face is there now. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. What I happened? I think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but keys. He should learn to listen. Plus, he didn't say he doesn't believe in these things. Why is he in this conversation? I again? heard what okay. you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I can oh, see I it up close, maybe I can. I oh, am you not can. going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. There yep. are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Yeah, but I was thinking, maybe all the house needs is a blessing. <laughs> Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? <coughs> yep. Oh, the house did change hands over the years from one distant relative of the airmen guards to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though, and it remained that way until its current owners decided to sell it. Why did I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's, not it's, a bad it's idea. really religious, though. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering his suggestion, are you? Do you have I am, idea? though. I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. You do that? Or we can find you a psychologist instead. <laughs> there are very few times in my life when I wish my glowers can kill. This is one of Ash, those. That is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Ethnographer. What do you mean? I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course. If you. Ashton, if you don't stop. Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Becca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her huh? name. What? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. And can you guys keep it down? <laughs> the, the the hell is that voice? is really good. But since Scaredy Cat here mentioned curses, not that I'm saying this is one because that's nigh improbable. Okay. You probably benefit more from someone like Andrew. The stuff you're saying is still really hard to believe. But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out teach you a couple things. At best, he'll let you see things from a different perspective and probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be bothering you a lot. Ash might be right too, however, what Zach also suggested is something I'm more familiar with. Granted, they don't believe me and they're only giving me the suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or being laughed at. I can take comfort in knowing they are willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever- I don't know. I go with the priest because I think it's something something supernatural is I, I don't know I, I don't 
have to say that. <laughs> I think that might offend somebody. So I'll go with the priest because because this is not a psychological issue, I think. Because we also saw the ghost. So but let's go with the priest. I don't need a professor. I'll think about it. But maybe we could go with Zack's idea? I'm not so sure about that. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least we did something than just stand around. Right. I'll let you know when he's available, Bella. Thanks, Zack. I knew I could count on you. Guys, I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it. You're <sighs> not even paying attention yourself. It ain't a big deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. The least we could do is watch it with you. And that's what you're all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Becca. We'll stop now. I throw her an apologetic. Even if the Ash only one, she should be reprimanding. But her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting the way she is right there, there's a big chance something snagging her. Okay, I'm sorry, Becca. We all fall into a comfortable silence after the kind only you can share with people you're most at ease with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Ah, uh, His friends are really cute. Wait, what the hell, man? Wait, wait, wait. What the hell, man? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wait, I'll just pick something up. Um, yeah, there it is. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, the, it was not stretched up to the screen, so there it is. I'll, I fixed it. Okay. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling full of people, those about to head home, those set to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking this sea of unfamiliar, it strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city as an undescript as Locksborn. I was afraid too, at one point back when I was new and had just set foot in the place. Now with a familiar face walking with me, it feels like a little like home. Zack and Ash bid us goodbye shortly before Becca and I crossed to the other side of the street. The former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of before the day ends and Ash? Uh, who knows, he never tells. Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash he just that to Zack a lot, much to his friend's frustration. Although he's a busy guy too, in, in spite of the laid back air he gives off. Thanks. No problem, Zack. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Help. Oh my god. A sensation. Cold sickening, drowning, my chest tightening, breathing, becoming labored. I can taste blood in my mouth, the edges of my vision blurs. In my distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about, a voice reaches out to me. Bleeding even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hands over my ears. Whispering and whispering, calling out, help me. No, not me. Isabella? Earth to Isabella! Oh my god, at her voice the whole world suddenly snapped into place, the murmur is gone. When I open my eyes, Becca raises an eyebrow. Weren't you question. listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... yeah. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. I follow her without complaint, but not before sneaking a glass to the far end of the street. Where the voice came from, where another set of eyes might be peering at me. Okay, nothing. There's only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca, Becca Park our ride home. If I'm expecting to see something or someone there, I try to let it show. Try not to think of the tiny pinpricks of the fear crawling at the pit of my see stomach. See you guys some other time. Bye bye. Y yeah. See ya. Another glance and with the final wave, we go off on our ways. I don't know what I saw. I don't know what I heard. I don't know. I don't want to know. If this is what will help me sleep tonight, what will give me back the normalcy, then so be it. Darkness closes around me, grasping, pulling, engulfing me. The ground caves in, and without warning, I'm falling. <laughs> my eyes snap open. For an instant, this new digital register where I am. Oh my god, it's really, really. Oh my god. It's like my room, though. Everything's everywhere. Drenched in sweat, the nest of fills I often keep around me feels more suffocating than comforting. There's like a, a, bunch, a bunch of noodle cups here if you can see my cursor. Why the hell are there so many noodle cups? And also there. I let my eyes adjust to the bright morning light streaming through my window and allow my breathing to slow down before untangling myself from the pile. I haven't had a single dream since coming to Locksborn, or at least none I can recall having. 
It's a shame because it used to be so vivid. Not your case to be. <laughs> Maybe it's just the stress of living alone. That knowledge that always wake up in an empty apartment with no one to tell stories to. What time is it? Habit forces me to look over the clock, even as learning is weighing heavily on my shoulders, and the compulsion to never leave my bed for the day. The heartbeat oh, I'm man. up. Of all the times to oversleep! Towel! Towel! Where's my towel? Oh my god. So we can understand a spoken at an tells me to extra hours of sleep, but if Rose didn't kill me yet, she sure as hell will now. And right after what happened. Oh lord, one box of don't I space offering would be enough the second time around. Grabbing my towel and my to when our mom falls ring and breaks out. There's a moment of indecision at first, my mind conflicted whether I should just ignore or answer it. What if it's Rose or worse our boss? And she's in the end the rational part of my brain wins out. Just decide if it is enough to put me in the family. The color I read mama. It's around 445. Oh my god, so she's a Philip Oh my god. That's an unusual time. So she's a Filipino. Okay, 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 okay. Around noon, they hear any of them one calling, not the other way around. Better for them to use that money on something else than an international call. Regardless, I can Hello? gather. Hello? Grace? How are you? Mama! I'm doing okay. How are you guys over there? We're good, we're good. EJ won a storytelling contest at school the other week. Brought home a medal. I thought you should know. There's a tired lit in her voice as she speaks. It's been there since Papa had to leave this job. I wish there's something I could do for her, but from miles away like this, the least I'm able to do is to not to make her worry. If one only my older brother will actually lend her a hand, but the Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Odds are Kuya Jordan's already out drinking right now. Again. Kuya, okay. She's a Filipino. I can count on my older sister either knowing she has a family of her own. And, well, at the end's financial situation isn't exactly great right now, having run herself knee-deep in debt. Great! That's great! Tell him congratulations from me. And let him know I'm gonna send him a little something extra this Christmas. How about Nico? Karen? Michael? I hope they're okay? They're doing well. They wanted to talk to you, but they're all busy with school. Oh no, uh. that's fine. I don't want to bother them. Just tell them to keep doing their best for me. I'll just call back when I know they're not busy. And Papa? How's Papa doing? Subject I'm a bit hesitant to broach and from the way Mama's way, she also doesn't want to bring it up. Papa. Grace, Papa's... He's having a little difficulty right now. Weak appetite, he's having trouble swallowing, and lost a few pounds. But the doctor said we should keep encouraging him. It just means his body's accepting his new treatment well. The money you sent last time helped a lot to pay for it, by the way. Oh, wait. Last time helped a lot to pay it for it, by the oh, way. I see. Th th <coughs> that's good. I won't deny that life has, g life has gotten tougher for our family. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. But ever since he was diagnosed with a sickness five years ago, he had been unable to provide for us. Now the burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's boots all rests on my shoulders. Although Mama makes me a little except Accepting sewing and laundry jobs in our neighborhood is scarcely enough to cover the cost of day-to-day -day living, let alone the bloating hospital bills. Oh, that's so sad. We can't even expect help from our own government because the health insurance there barely covers anything. I'm sure he'll get better soon. Is he well enough to talk? Do you think I'll be able to speak to him, Ma? Silence. I think the call got cut. Listen, Grace. Maybe it's better if we transfer Papa to a different hospital. Somewhere cheaper? What? Why? Did something happen? Is it the deposit issue again? Give me the hospital's number. I'll talk to them. No, it's nothing bad. The service here is good. Too good. Even the doctors. But I'm worried you're working yourself to the ground because of it. Mama, we've been through this before. <laughs> I want the best for Papa. And don't worry about the bills or the medicine, or me for that matter. I can handle myself. Everything's going well here. In fact, in fact, we're about to close a large sale. Hopefully. If not, then I'll find another way. She doesn't need to know that. Sorry, Mama, you taught me not to lie yet. Look at what I'm doing. I'll have money to send over soon to cover the rest of Papa's treatment. And there's more than enough for Karen, Nico, Michael, and EJ's school tuition for the next semester, too. Thank you so much, dear. I appreciate it. We all do. But I, I just wish you'd come home to us soon. Aww. Kailan ka uuwi? Ah, when are you coming home? 
AJ the youngest used to be the sole person asking me that. How do you respond to a question you don't have definite answer to? Five years later and I still get oh that's so sad. Give them a straight one. As I smile though mama can't see it, I fight to keep my lips from quivering, my voice from shaking. She's got enough on her plate as it is. No need to weigh her down with the necessary concerns. Promise me you'll be there to welcome me when I do, okay? Of course. I'm sorry, Grace. I need to take this for a while. This is more commotion on the other end. The sound of gates opening, the voice of a child, EJ, talking excitedly about his day at school. The tapping of feet and the floorboard as he runs. It's been years since I went home but I can still picture the whole scene in my mind. How tall is he now? Are the neighborhood kids bullying him now that I'm not around? Did Mama rearrange the furniture in the living room again? What are they having for dinner today? I miss them. I miss them it's so okay, much. It's okay, Ma. I need to go too. I've got work today. I'll call again soon, alright? On a Saturday? Oh, never mind. Take care of yourself, dear. I love you. I love you. Bye. It ends with a soft click, leaving half truth and empty promises hanging in the air. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, this is so sad. Um, seeing something like that in a uh, visual novel, I didn't expect something like that. Um, it's really, really cute. Uh, and I, you know that feeling when you can say like, oh, that's so sad. Because um, being in the, I think being outside of the country is really hard for someone like Isabella. Knowing that she's from the Philippines and it's really hard living here right now. And it's really, it's really sad. <laughs> Ah, I don't know if we can keep this up. <laughs> uh. Uh. Can I save this right here? Uh. Can I stop right <laughs> That's really sad, I, I can't take it for now. Okay, so I'll stop right here for now. Um, this this was a short episode for now um and that's it for this episode of the letter maybe i don't know what part it is <laughs> okay so that's it thanks guys for watching um this is dash dashing out